Welcome back. Prior to the coronavirus pandemic, about one in five Americans had symptoms of anxiety or depression. Researchers estimate that number tripled last month. I believe that people are feeling nervous. They're feeling isolated. It's a very hard time right now. We've got racial tensions, the pandemic, money problems, and so many other worries just compounding on top of us. Asha Terry is an author, award-winning community, health at mental health advocate, psychotherapist, and certified life coach. She joins us now with ways that we can all manage anxiety. Good morning to you, Asha. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, I think people feel every part of, of all things that are going on in the world today. And let's start with just COVID in general as we move on to other topics. But starting there, how, are, how can people start to manage the anxiety that we, we're feeling with that, especially as we kind of start to emerge? Yes, thank you for having me this morning. So before everything that we are seeing now in the media, people were dealing with COVID-19 related symptoms, the stress associated with that, including the change in their lifestyle, as well as people who were suffering and passing away due to the illness. So folks were already feeling very worked up, very emotionally charged. So what I always advise people to do is to remember your breath, because when we get anxious or worried or fearful about the future, what we tend to do is breathe these very shallow breaths, and that creates more inflammation in the body, more stress and worry in the brain, and then it's much harder to relax and decompress when there's all of these other things that are going on at the same time. So your breath is available to you. The cheapest thing you can do is to breathe from your diaphragm and be able to help uh, center yourself by remembering your breath and to help, so hopefully you'll find that that'll be calming to what's going on <coughs> in your mind and both in your body. Those are great, that's such a great tip tip and I think people forget to breathe. They especially forget to breathe right. So I appreciate that. And I think our anxiety is different as it relates to the pandemic and the virus, worrying about people we love and about getting sick versus all the tension that we're experiencing in our world right now because of George Floyd's death. So do you sort of separate those things? Are there different ways to manage anxiety depending on what's giving people the most anxiety? It's hard to call that out because I think it depends on where people are in terms of how they're dealing with one stressor or another. I think what we see now is not only anxiety, but compounded grief. People were already grieving from the transitions they were forced to make suddenly at the top of the year with this illness that's been you know, affecting people. But also with the recent uprisings, we're experiencing a resurgence of people's feeling of being oppressed, um, which also exacerbates symptoms of feeling worry and stress, um, wondering if it's going to affect not only their employment, but also other things that are happening to their social relationships. So people are experiencing not only the anxious feelings that come up, but the grief associated with loss and compounded loss. So it's hard to really separate one from the other. I think we need to afford people is the chance to be able to label their feelings, to call it out, to be able to have people to hold safe space for them, which means being able to listen to people when they're suffering, to be able to hold them where they are, both psychologically as well as emotionally and physically, and to be able to not tell them to turn that off, but to help them to rather tune into what they're feeling. I like that you just acknowledge sort of um allowing yourself to sit in your feelings and feel them and acknowledge them, like you said, because I think with grief, so often we want to rush it, right? We, we don't like feeling that way, so we want it to go faster. And I don't know if that's even possible to rush grief. So I'm glad that you brought that up of just really feeling the feelings. Is that something that people try and do too often is sort of rush through grief or thinking that we can and we can't? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's two things that go on when people are witnessing and experiencing grief. It's the worry that no one's going to understand your grief or that people don't want to listen to grief for too long. Just like you said, yeah. sometimes we experience that folks want us to feel good and to feel better quickly. So we may notice that sometimes people can be there physically or psychologically, but how long? And, and with grief, there is no timeline. It's very invasive and we may feel and experience waves of grief. We may notice that we can cope with it better at some points, and then it may come back up or be triggered by other events that are happening in our world. 
You know, a lot of times people talk about managing anxiety, but I think for people who experience anxiety, they want to get over it. They want to get past it. They want to learn tools to not just manage it, but sort of put it behind them. Is that possible? Yes, you could do life, I say, with tools, but most of the time what I notice is people learn to live with mental illness. And so what does that mean? That means that you can work and still have anxiety. You can raise a family and have anxiety. You can date and have anxiety. I think it's more commonplace now to talk about our anxiety, whereas before we often wanted to push it to the side or keep it silent or only wait until we got to our doctor's office to talk about it. But now we're seeing that people can actually thrive with anxiety. So tools are helpful, but you may not necessarily recover fully from anxiety as much as you learn to live with it. I love all that. I think it's so important, the conversation that we had. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to just give your book a plug. We kind of ran out of time, but you got a new book coming out. It's called Adulting as a Millennial, a guide to everything your parents didn't teach you. <laughs> Who's it for? Just give us one quick sentence because we're out of time. Absolutely. It's for young professionals who are trying to navigate the world through anxiety, imposter syndrome, and mutually beneficial relationships. I love the title. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.